Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Ghost Prime. And I got the Legacy United Generation 1 Universe Optimus Prime. And I didn't expect this. I, not after Missing Link, or not so close to Missing Link, I just did not expect them to release another articulated Generation 1 Optimus Prime. And I think that it actually took a little bit of the shine and luster off of this release that Missing Link is a thing. Because if this would have came out before Missing Link, it would have been the talk of the town, right? This would have been very, very cool. So I'm going to go over the differences between this and Missing Link, and I'm going to go over uh, just what I think about this in this review. So please like and subscribe and all that. Without any further ado, let's get to the review. I'm transporting you back in time, here he is in the packaging. And it is a Legacy United package, just like any other. But we see the toy right there with, with no... Window, I suspect these heads will be stolen if you could pull them off that well. I'm not going to try, but I suspect that'll happen. Uh, eventually, Hasbro is going to move back to the windowed boxes, which will be nice when they do that eventually. Uh, here he is in his alt mode. It says uh, so G1 Universe Optimus Prime. On the side, you see his toy head and toy body there. And I think that's cool. I like seeing the artwork as the toy because it kind of reminds me of the back box art a little bit. Uh, a little bit. It's really nice seeing it instead of the stylized version. Uh, here on the back, 16 steps from robot to truck. On this side, we have the Autobot side of the Legacy United box art. And my camera, I don't know how to... You guys know how to stop the Samsung cameras from doing that? Let me know. And, uh, yeah, let's get this guy open. I open it up for the bottom. makes it easy to slide out. Oh, he's a little smaller than I thought he would. A little stumpy. That's okay. I think he looks good so far. His instruction sheet, which is huge compared to him. And on the back, we have his accessories. All right, let's uh, release him and clean this up. We'll be right back. Getting him out of the box, you can see everything that he comes with here. And he comes with the obligatory inner John axe done in a hard plastic. He has two blasters. Now, it's weird. So this is, represents his earlier bloated and, come on, focus, and later thinned out gun. What's interesting about both of them is, first off, they're very detailed, but they're also fully painted, which is something we don't usually see. I don't know what they're cast in, but they are fully painted in a glossy black. He also comes with his Matrix, which is not painted at all, this could have used some paint for sure. Some silver paint, some orange paint would actually make this look really nice. And that does fit in his chest. Set of instructions, which, I mean, we could pretty much figure out how to transform this, I'll save for the arms. Get it close up on that head sculpt. Pfft, look at that thing, that is gorgeous. I love the light piping, which I usually don't, but I think that just really makes the eyes pop, the vents in the uh, face scar or the, the mouth plate. It's just awesome. I mean, he looks really good. All the details there, translucent windows, even has the detail here. I wish these were painted. I think these being painted would have been very nice. You got silver plastic here, silver plastic here, silver plastic for the stacks, painted hands. The detail is there for the knees. If I could, if you could see it, if it gets in focus, silver painted gas cans. The, the, the vents, sculpt work is there on the toes, uh, silver, or sorry, silver plastic, I guess, for the, the rims, and the tires are like that PVC rubber, PVC rubber, which is really nice. Overall, I think it looks really good. Now you can open up that, you can see the matrix cavity, and then just stick the matrix right in there like so close that up you can see it right through there now one thing i did notice on trying to put these on now these are painted and I th i'm not sure if that's what does it but you could kind of hear it I'm trying to get that in and it's it doesn't go I, I just it's really really hard to get that in this is as well this being translucent plastic 
just makes me scared to try to push it all the way in. So I can only get down to like that before I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be able to get this out without breaking this thing. And I think, I, I think there's a little bit of a tolerance issue there. But overall, he does look pretty nice. Uh, for this other gun, you could actually, there's a, a port right here that you could just stick that in. So he could hold all of his weapons in robot mode. Let's just bring him to the side and do some comparison. And first up for comparison, we have to bring in Missing Link. Because this is more closely related to Missing Link than probably a regular deluxe Optimus Prime. And he's a little stout. I can understand why they didn't make the legs thinner because of the size, it'd probably be fragile. And I do miss the chrome, but I think overall it looks pretty good. I really do. It looks, you know, looks pretty good. I do wish that these were painted. I, I think that would like make this pop a little bit more, but it's not too bad. There he is from the side and the back. You do have some gappiness waffling here, but overall pretty cohesive. There's some ports that show up on the legs. We'll get into that in truck mode. I had to move the camera to bring in the Studio Series for a comparison as he is much, much shorter. As you could tell, he only comes up to about there, about the windows on the, the recent Studio Series Commander class. Of course, these are two very different prices. So there, there's that. But that's how those two compare together. Kind of get a good idea of size here with the Cyberverse Ghost Prime and the... G1 Deluxe Legacy Prime. So they are very relatively the same size. Of course, this one's much chunkier. This one, this one's heavier. Because this one actually is missing a lot of plastic. Hollow legs and such. But height-wise, it's about the Cyberverse Deluxe scale. We're going to go ahead and take the guns off. All the weapons, we'll set those aside. Uh, before we get into it, one thing I do want to point out, these are on a five millimeter peg. They don't, they pop in, uh, they don't, they come off. They don't need to come off for any reason, but they, they, they do. Uh, I think it's probably for cost cutting or maybe because, so they'll get broken or whatever else. Uh, I don't know why they do that, but that is something to note. All right, and for the articulation, we're gonna do a versus showdown with these two. Because they are both articulated G1 Prime, so I figure it's only fitting to do an articulation versus. I mean, overall, we already saw the comparisons. They're pretty close. So first off, the head. Up and down, 360. What can this one do? Well, it could go up, 360, but that's about it. Shoulders, out to there at the shoulders. Can't go anymore, no forward, but it can't go backward. This one, up here, shoulders weight on this one. Of course, we could go back, all the way up, up and around, go back, same thing. Biceps, 90, bicep, 90 with ratchets. The hands, the wrists can swivel around and the fingers open. The hands do nothing. They can't do anything at all. The chest does open on both. This one has an ab crunch, which is terribly hard to do, and I feel like I'm gonna break it every time. This one does not, but this one does have a flap in the, in the front, where this one does not, but he can still kick pretty far, almost 90 without the flap and he could kick 90 with the flap not quite as far with it down both of them have these pieces that move out of the way four leg out to the side piece move out of the way leg out to the side about 90. they have thigh swivel thigh swivel knee bend to 90 knee bent and over 90 
and forward a little bit. And this one has toes, up and down, and angle rockers. And this one has ankle rockers, toes that go up and down, and he could spin his feet 360 degrees. So that's a cool little feature. So overall, Missing Link is a bit more articulated with the shoulders and the hands and the wrists, but he has those feet, which is actually a nice consolation prize over this one. That could give it a bit more of a way to pose. Kind of pose about a little bit and stand him up in ways he can't do. So I would say the winner is still missing Link. However, this one is so pretty awesome in articulation as well. So transformation is super, super easy. We're going to start with the fist because that's really the difference. So the fist here, we're going to take it, open it up. Oh, and I hate this. So this, you can see where it's even bending it. So like, let's look around here. So that arm right there is thin and it's tight. And that terrifies me doing that. I feel like that's going to break. I'm guessing repeated transformations will be okay, at least hopefully. And we move this around. See at least how little that arm is, and then push that back up and snaps together. You do that for both the arms. And they're both just as tight, you know, just uh, like that. I feel like just pushing on this too much will break it. The arms. Now, for the back, you open this up. Head goes back around, snaps in, covers. I mean, everything else is pretty much as we'd expect. Arms back like this, this. Now there's a tab right there that tabs into place inside here. If you can see it, because the camera keeps going out of focus. Then you just kind of push it in there. And then same with this other arm. So there's also, I think, like this groove tab here, if it goes in focus, see like right there, right there. And you kind of push that in all the way. Take the arm, push that in, and that just tabs in place. Uh, the feet. Make sure the ankles are secured and tabbed. Feet go up, just like G1 Prime. And there's a series of tabs in here. And I'd also like to point out that the detail in the inside of the leg is really nice because that actually looks like the G1 figure. And then you just tab those in. And then the legs come up like you would on any Prime. But there is a tab right there. That really what that does is it helps friction, get that all straightened up out there, the legs in there. So the legs kind of pop in there and they stay nice and tight. So here he is in truck mode. Now in truck mode, I could get this one to kind of stay, but I can't get this tab to stay in at all, which is irritating because it just won't, I don't know if I have to shave something off of it or what. There he is in truck mode. And he rolls pretty well. And yeah, I think he looks pretty excellent. All right, I think the big question on everyone's minds is, can he use a G1 trailer? That answer is absolutely yes. Of course, he does look tiny on it, but yes, he could use a G1 trailer, which is a very cool little callback. Love that. But wait, we all know the Earthrise trailer is tiny. Well, let's see if this works. Now, I haven't tried this yet, but there's a hole there, and it does work, and it looks more appropriately sized for the Earthrise trailer. So that's a very cool little feature indeed, that it could, it could handle both the Earthrise and the G1 trailers. I gotta say, besides the wheels not matching, that doesn't look so bad. It's got perfect turn radius. It does look pretty good. That's really cool. For weapon storage, you have these, but I just would set them aside. You could put the, the ax there, which it holds loosely, and the two guns here, which will hold that on by just basically uh, pinning it in there. Here he is next to a Generation 1 Optimus Prime. You see the size difference, comparisons there. 
I like what they did with the the rims. They're very close to these. Get an idea there. The size of those two. So overall, I think the detail on this thing is really good. I think all the detail really shows here, really shows the silver and everything. I think it's very G1. Um, this is a bummer, but this it's still it's a very G1 figure. Which is really nice. I, I definitely like it. Um, but on that note, let's get the final thoughts. So in conclusion, it's kind of a different beast than Missing Link. It's the same, but different. It's a much smaller scale, a much cheaper price, and actually is still really awesome. If you don't have a Missing Link or it might be out of your budget, this is a really fantastic figure to get because he is affordable and has a lot of the charm of that Missing Link. It really, really does. This being the first mainline Generation 1 Optimus Prime and toy in quite some time is really, really cool. I still think that it's weird to release the Missing Link and this so close together that it does take some of the shine off of this one actually being a thing. Because this one is a really, really good little Optimus Prime. Um, if you already have a missing link, I don't know if you'd really need this. That's the one thing that I think where this would sell more to those people. Although it is a different market for the missing link. Missing link is more like a masterpiece where this is mainline. That's the difference, right? We have those two already together, like Zero Series 86 and MP44, very different price points. Both really nice figures, but prices are super different. And that's sort of where this falls in line with the Missing Link. Let me know in the comments what you think of this guy. Do you have this and the Missing Link? Are you just gonna get this? Or do you have the Missing Link and don't wanna get this? Anyway, I'll see you in the next review.